I was proud of, of playing her. And you know what? Fuck it. Like, if it meant I didn't, like, get jobs down the line because I played a gay character, they can all go screw themselves. Hashtag making of tous les mercredis de 20h à 21h avec Kevin et Larby sur VL. Thank you for giving us some, some of your time. My pleasure. I'm so happy to meet you. You can't Aww. ever imagine. Anyway, um, is it your, it's not your first time in Paris. No. But have, <laughs> have you been uh, doing your Paris from French movies, French cinema? Have you been watching some French movies? Yeah, I love the um, like Charlotte Gainsbourg, Kim Tall movies, like that. You know. Ah, really? Yeah, yeah, those are great. Uh, you can watch that in the US. Yeah. Like in theaters yeah, or yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. So that's a nice thing to hear. So, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being with us. Um, Buffy turned 20 last year. Wow. Buffy's gotten old. 20. And you've been for some teenagers like me, which Ooh. were kind of bullied because you were different in high school. Uh, you were the first representation we had, uh, we had as LGBT people. I know that you've been, you asked a lot of, uh, you, you've been answered a lot of questions about that over the last 20 years, but did you know the impact and the legacy that you would have for teenagers like me? Um, when you shot that 20 years ago? No. <laughs> you know, you, you sort of work in a vacuum. You know, we're on a sound stage and we're making a television show. And you know that there's something greater than just a television show happening, but you don't realize the impact that it's going to have. That it's going to, to be the beginning of change and change that's really important, change that needs to happen. Um, I know Allison and I, both feel very honored that we got to walk in those character's shoes and be a part of that experience. Um, and I would do it again in a heartbeat. Like it is, it is one of the things I am most proud of in my life that I got to be a part of that. And it was so groundbreaking. Because it wasn't about two girls making out. It was about two human beings who fell in love with each other. We both happen to be women. And that is a very rare thing when you find somebody you love. It doesn't oh, yeah. matter. Oh yeah. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. yeah. what, when, where, you know, what what casing you're you're in. If you find that soulmate, that person, that is a beautiful, rare thing that should be celebrated, not denigrated, or you should not be abused because of it. I Indeed. Think, I think Buffy was, was part of that, like moving forward of saying that we we need equality. Exactly, and you open the door to actors because I received, uh, I had on my show two weeks ago, I don't know if you know about Ryan Murphy shows, but uh -huh. there's a new show called Pose. Yep, yep. And Pose uh, is making a great difference. Uh, we have real trans people yep. playing yes, trans people. Yes, it's fantastic. And someone from the casting, as an actor, had a question for you. Were you at all nervous about portraying? Uh, lesbian characters on primetime television at this time when the conversation was not so uh, pro-LGBT? Maybe maybe I'm just an idiot, but I, I didn't really care. I felt like this character was an incredible character that I got to play her, made me happy, and I was proud of, of playing her. And you know what? Fuck it. Like, if it meant I didn't, like, get jobs down the line because I played a gay character, they can all go screw themselves. I, you know, wouldn't change it for anything in the world. It, like I said, it's one of the things I'm most proud of in my life, that I got to be a part of that. And, uh, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes things happen that you don't expect, and that was Buffy. I did not expect any of this, that I would be sitting here talking to you, to, to, you know, 15, 16 years down the line. But, uh, but... I wouldn't change it, not for anything. And, you know, in retrospect, like so maybe right. I should have been like aware of, but you know what? I don't care. I'm I'm honored. Oh yes, and, and you blessed. should be. You should be <laughs> the best show ever. Um, a, a year ago, when you made that photo shoot for Entertainment Weekly for the 20th anniversary of the show, everybody talked about that in the entire world. Not the the, the photo shoot, but the legacy of the show. Yeah. And with the Game of Thrones, it's uh, the most studied shows in the U.S. in faculties, in universities. Oh wow! Yeah. And when you received the script, did you know? Oh my God, this material <laughs> is so much more than what is. It is written, I'm thinking about a great scene in season four when you have an orgasm with uh, Hadis Nangan with Willow. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And when I watched that when I was 12, I was like, oh my god, this is beautiful. Then at 14, there's something that I'm not 18, oh my god, I get it. And <laughs> same thing with addiction, with drugs. Yes, there's so many yes. subtexts. Yes. Did you get that when you received the script? Yes. Or, yeah? Yes, no. We. The, the wonderful thing about working on that set is that. Um, We were on a sound, you know, on a sound stage, but our writers' rooms were 
different part of the, of the facility. So if you had a question about anything, you could go up to the writers and be like, what does this mean? <laughs> What's okay. happening here? Um, and I think everybody was very cognizant of what we were doing. The fact that we were, when we talked about magic, maybe we were talking about, you know, two women having sexual, intimate, you know, relationship, you know. Um, because we weren't really allowed in the beginning to touch or kiss or do any of that stuff. It was stuff. in the WB and it was 9 o'clock. So and it was really interesting because, you know, Buffy and Spike are like yeah. having sex on a headstone <laughs> and we're not allowed to touch. And uh, both of Allison and I both were very upset about this. We felt like like we should be able to portray this part. This is this is a natural part of this relationship. It's not fair. And one of um, one of the crew members who was gay took us aside and was like, "Look, it doesn't matter if you touch. It's the fact that the two of you treat each other with empathy and compassion and respect, yeah. and you have a relationship." And people in the middle of America who don't understand what it means to be LGBTQ, um, they're seeing it for the first time and they're seeing it in a beautiful way and you're changing their mind. Because when you know somebody who's different than you and you know them personally and you have a relationship with them, it changes how you see things. You know, I grew up in Alabama in the Bible Belt where you can't be anything. Yeah. Oh and uh, you know, so so that's good for you that you turned out to be an actress that defend freedom and you know, but like, but you know, did you watch movies about freedom? Did, of course, since you grew of up course. In but I grew theater. up doing theater. Ah, okay. So you know, there's there is a big LGBTQ population in, in American <laughs> sure. theater. Um, so I knew, I grew up, you know, I saw that people were different. You know, that guy likes that guy. So what? But if you don't know anybody who's different than you, how are exactly. you, you know, if you've never met somebody whose skin is a different color than yours, how are, you know, like, so you need to, to be introduced. And television is a great way to be like, hey, we're all the same, we all bleed red. And that's how Buffy introduced poop. me to LGBT <laughs> people when I was 11 and 12, when I was growing up in those countryside. So you did the same thing. And it's still like, you know, he asked me the question on the computer, but like, still having the same fight. The fact that, you know, on Pose, is, they have to deal with it still, with people and bad behavior and, and, and people not being kind. It's still a battle, and I salute everybody who's still continuing the fight forward, because it's, it's not there yet. We're not there. We're not, there's not equality in our world. Are you optimistic with Trump getting into power? Because in France, we evolved a lot over the last years. But we can, as <laughs> we were like when Trump went into power, I talked about that with Michael Phil last year because I was like, all the works you did for years for representation, and when Trump came into power, I was like, oh my god, I hope that 20 years of artistic and television representation could be crushed down. Yeah. So you're optimistic about the future of the. I'm optimistic about the next generation of creative human beings. I'm less optimistic about my generation and the generations ahead of, above me who are still entrenched in a very backward mindset. Um, but I know that, that moving forward, once we all go, then the, the generations below, they, they, they're going to be different because it is a more diverse world. The internet has changed. We're connected in a global way that you know, we've never been that way before. So I, I, as awful as the Trump stuff is, and it is awful. Hey man, I know, I know, it's awful. Good luck for you. Uh, <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to be showing a scene from an episode I love. I think I watched a million, a zillion times this episode. It's a musical, Once More With Feeling. <laughs> My favorite. And it's, it's a scene with uh, Anthony Stewart-Hitt, your duet. Aww. Do you remember shooting this scene? I think it's mm -hmm. Joss Whedon's favorite scene from the whole show. He was waiting for you too. <laughs> what did you remember from this day of shooting? Well, Tony and I recorded our song separately. So we were not in the studio together singing. Um, so the first time I heard the two, the, 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 the song, the two of us singing together, was on set when we were shooting it. Really? Mm -hmm. And um, the way that they shot it was really interesting because, see, I'm going to get technical sounding. Yeah, yeah. So the, the camera lens can't hold in focus somebody who's here and then somebody who's way back here. You know, it's either you got to focus here or you got to focus there. And so what they did is an optical trick where they shot... Tony in focus and me in focus and then they put them together 
separate, like separately, just the way we did the song, kind of in a way. But we were shooting like on the same day, and so we were shooting. So you were not together on the frame. So we're not together on the frame, oh really. My God, yeah. Really? Yeah. Like when you're coming to I think I think I'm right on this. Don't don't quote me now that I've said. Now I'm like turning. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that that's that's that it had to be kind of put together. And my last question, if you had to choose one movie with one particular scene that defined for you what cinematography is, your kind of cinematography, what would it be? And we're going to be showing this scene. Oh, mine? Oh my gosh. You know, it's got to be, I'm going to sound like a total film nerd. Uh, it's got to be... Uh, uh, we're watching by film notes, so you can go in. I can say anything? You can say anything. All right, Bergman's Cries and Whispers. <gasps> yeah. One of my all-time, like, Sven Nyquist just knocks it out of the park. Any part. scene in particular? <sighs> Ooh, there's some... You, like, I think anything where she's, like, in bed and she's, like... It's like uh, it's so, and the clock, t like, the... Uh. Thank you, Miss Benson. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. This was awesome. À Paris, Lyon, Marseille, Lille, Bordeaux et partout dans le monde. Écoute VL sur vl-media.fr et sur ton app.